The anime focused on a young boy named Tatsumi. It showed that Tatsumi and his two friends would leave for the kingdom. Their goal was to become royal soldiers to save their village from poverty. They were Yasu and Seo. Before leaving, the village head gave him an amulet that Tatsumi must always carry under any circumstances. But on their way, robbers intercepted them, and to save themselves, they had to be separated. Sometime later, Tatsumi met two merchants who were attacked by monsters. He easily defeated the monster. After that, he told them he would be famous in the kingdom because being a great and famous person was his dream, so they should remember his name well. But that person told him that the capital was not the place of hope or dream that Tatsumi had dreamed of. It was peaceful there, but the monsters were even worse than the ones he had just defeated. There were a lot of humans whose hearts were like monsters, but Tatsumi couldn't just back down because they promised to save the village. The scene changed when Tatsumi arrived at the capital. He immediately went to a place that could reward him for completing the mission. But because he was impatient and wanted to go straight to the challenging levels, also because there was a limit on accepting jobs, he got kicked out of there. Long after, he met a woman who would kindly help him. She knew the quickest way to get hired by the government. Her name was Leon. But before that, she asked Tatsumi to treat her to a drink. There, she told Tatsumi that he could work quickly by having money and insiders. Leon said she had an acquaintance who would give Tatsumi a job. Tatsumi innocently gave all his money. However, until the shop closed, Leon did not come back. The shop owner told Tatsumi had been tricked by the woman earlier. Because he had no money, he was forced to sleep on the streets. Then a girl found him and took Tatsumi to her house. There, he was very grateful because there were still good people from that kingdom. Meanwhile, he thought of his two friends who separated on the way. The next day he brought the girl who had helped him yesterday. There he could see an enormous royal building. He thought maybe that was where the great emperor was, someone who could change the kingdom. But one of the soldiers told him it was a little different there. There was the emperor who was still a child, and it was the prime minister who managed the emperor behind the scenes. He was the reason the kingdom was evil, and there was also a group of dreaded assassins. They were called Night Raid, just like their name, they attacked at night. The scene moved at night when someone attacked the family. Tatsumi, who felt the killing intent, immediately rushed out. There for the first time, he saw the group from Night Raid. He was shocked those people finished off the soldiers so quickly. Tatsumi tried to help the girl, but his powers were nothing for the Night Raid members. Luckily he was still helped by the amulet he brought. It turned out that Leon was one of their members. Leon told them why they wanted to kill the family, and how shocked Tatsumi was when he saw many victims in the warehouse. They had trapped the villagers, tortured them, and toyed with them until they died. It turned out that his two friends were also there in a deplorable condition. Their Tatsumi, without further ado, immediately slashed at the girl. But unfortunately, Tatsumi could not save Iyasu because he had previously been poisoned. After that, Leon chose to bring Tatsumi with them because they happened to be short of members. Here we were introduced to the members of Night Raid. There were group leaders Nagenda, Leon, Shiel, Mine, Bulat, Lubbock, and Akane. Told about 1000 years ago, there were 48 mighty royal weapons called Tegu. The first emperor made a weapon to strengthen the power and defense of the kingdom. Each Tegu had special powers, but until recently, Almost half of them disappeared and were destroyed in the Civil War five centuries ago. Only some people could use the Tegu weapon. From the Night Raid group, each member had a royal weapon. Akame used the sword named Murasama. If the sword even slightly hit it, then the poison curse would enter through the wound and would be killed. Lionel, used by Leon, allowed her to transform herself into beasts and improved her physique. The incursio used by Bulette was in the form of impenetrable armor, but its use carried considerable risk. An ordinary person would die trying to use it. The advantage of this weapon was that it could use objects around it and made itself invisible for a while. The pumpkin used by mine worked if the more pressured the user was, the stronger the destructive power. The crosstail used by Lubbock was a royal weapon made of powerful thread. By spreading the thread, the user could create a barrier capable of spotting enemy traps. The thread also could tie in severed things. The Ixtase weapon used by Shiel was a weapon that resembled a large pair of scissors. The weapon had the ability to cut through anything. Due to the thickness of the weapon, it could also be used as a defense. Magenda's goal in creating the Night Raid group was to eradicate royal corruptors, especially the Prime Minister who used the emperor. He also made an anti-imperial revolutionary army which grew into a large organization. 
They also form a group to carry out covert operations such as killing and gathering information. Maybe now they could only finish off the capital's fleas. But once they made their move, they would wreak havoc on the source of the Prime Minister's corruption and killed him with their own hands. But in doing so, everyone there could die at any time due to their actions. After hearing all the goals, Tatsumi joined their group. Of course, he also asked for payment for his hard work. The scene moved where Leon received a report about Gamel, the oil trader. He had already bribed ogres in large numbers. Ogre was one of the royal police. Whenever Gamel commits a crime, Ogre always concocted lies to frame others. For that, Night Raid would overcome them. Leon said the oil trader would be easy to deal with, but ogres could be very troublesome foes. He was a gifted swordsman whom even criminals feared. But there was a perfect time to beat him, especially when he was off-duty. He always drank on the main street, and there it was, Tatsumi, who would exterminate the ogre. Akame and Leon would tackle the oil merchant. When night fell, they carried out their mission. Leon and Akame quickly overcame Gamel. On the other hand, even though Tatsumi had some difficulties, he managed to defeat the ogre. Sayo. <laughs> Akame was very happy because Tatsumi could come back without the slightest injury. The next day several intruders knew the location of the night raid headquarters. Nagenda wanted them all killed so their information wouldn't reach the kingdom. Eventually, they managed to exterminate all the intruders. On the other hand, within the empire, the emperor would, without hesitation, punish a minister who disobeyed his rule. The prime minister used the emperor whose only job was eating. Returned to the night raid base, they got a mission to kill someone who had a relationship with the prime minister. He kidnapped many women and tortured them to death. When they arrived at the location, Mine and Tatsumi got ready. Mine aimed and managed to shoot the target without injuring anyone. But while walking home, they were attacked by Shihendai fighters. It was said that the Shihendai fighters were the strongest fighter in the kingdom. But thanks to Tatsumi holding it back, Mine could shoot that person. However, Tatsumi was very annoyed that the shot almost killed him as well. On the other hand, there was someone very dangerous. He killed people in sight. Nijenda told them their job now was to eradicate the butcher. He always appeared late at night and attacked people's heads indiscriminately. That person named Zanku was nicknamed the butcher. When they looked for Zanku's whereabouts, he was already watching them. There Tatsumi was caught in his trap which revealed Seo's figure. The weapon could see the point of view where the user could know the opponent's thoughts just by expression. Because of that weapon, Tatsumi's attacks became easily read. He was so overwhelmed fighting with him. It was only a short time before Akame came to help him, but she also had trouble fighting Zanku. Then Zanku issued the same skill to trick Akame by showing the figure of the person she loved, her sister, Kuro. But Akame was utterly unaffected by all of that. Because of her great affection for her sister, Akame wanted to kill Kuro. In the end, she also managed to destroy Zanku, the butcher. <laughs> The next day Nijenda ordered Tatsumi to try out the royal weapon Zanku used. But using that weapon made him physically and mentally exhausted. When Tatsumi tried the weapon, it turned out that the weapon rejected him. On the other side, the Emperor received reports about the growing revolutionary army. But he was then addressing the Prime Minister, more concerned with Night Raid having defeated his three subordinates. For that, he would call General Esdeath to come back. She was the woman who buried thousands of people in the North alive. At night Leon and Tatsumi went on a mission in the Red Light District. There were drug networks that kidnapped women to be sold and utilized. After killing the criminal, Tatsumi was confused about the fate of the victims who were addicted. But Leon had met a doctor who could treat them. On the other hand, Sheil and Mine met the royal policewoman. Her name was Ubiquitous Suryu. Suryu weapons could regenerate quickly. For that, they had to destroy the core of her body. Sheil intended to separate Suryu from the royal weapon. 
but there, they underestimated their opponent, so Shield was killed. At the last moment, Shield gave time for Mine to escape. In this mission, unfortunately, Shield must die. After that, all the members were unfortunate, but there was no time for them to do that because that was the risk for their duty. And now the battle with royal weapon users would continue, making their struggle even more difficult. On the other hand, Esdith had returned to the kingdom. She had no interest in power or anything to do with politics. For her, fighting and mastering the enemy was everything. She was very ready to kill the members of Night Raid. The next day after the incident, Tatsumi always trained to get stronger. Then Nejenda informed him that Esdeath had taken control of the north and returned to the capital. Several cases of murder befell several politicians. The victims were four politicians and 60 bodyguards. The problem was a leaflet claiming that it was all night raids doing meaning those who did it were night raids equal. Nejenda firmly believed they were Esdeath's underlings. Then Nejenda divided into two groups to tackle the following problem. Akame was with Lubbock, and Tatsumi was with Bulat. The location was the border of the capital. There will be an anchored luxury ship in the largest port. After sailing for a long time, something suddenly happened to people, including Tatsumi. It turned out that it was the work of one of Esdeath's underlings. It wasn't long before another underling came attacking him. Violet came to calm Tatsumi. At the same time, the three underlings immediately attacked him, but Violet quickly chased them away. But there was someone who was still standing and knew Violet very well. He was General Liver. In the past, General Liver was most respected as a comrade in arms. But one day, he was detained by the Prime Minister because he did not want to accept his bribes. After that, he was rescued by Esdef and was willing to become her servant. He managed to launch an attack using his secret technique and injured Bulat. It turned out that the blood contained a poison. Even though he managed to survive but one more underling was still alive. He changed himself until his body became bigger. At that time, Bullock gave his trust in Tatsumi. He gave the Incursa a weapon keys. The armor would come to someone who held it. At first, Tatsumi didn't believe he could use that weapon. But Bullock was sure that Tatsumi was the right one to use it. After using that weapon, Tatsumi managed to beat him. But on the other hand, in this mission, it was Bullock who must die. <laughs> After that, Nejenda intended to go to the Revolutionary Army headquarters to store royal weapons and recruit new members. On the other hand, Esdith had gathered six new members. Their group was called the Jaegers. Then she held a competition for who could get the royal weapon that Shiel used. Looking at the contest sheet, Lubbock suggested Tatsumi to enter, and he would get lots of money to send to his village. The next day at the place where the competition was held, Tatsumi was the last participant there. Even though he was small in stature, he could win his battle. When Esdith saw him, she suddenly fell in love with Tatsumi. She instantly knocked Tatsumi unconscious and took him to the kingdom. Regarding this problem, Lubbock felt very guilty, but Akame chose to move headquarters first. After that, she would save him any way she could. On the other hand, Tatsumi needed a clear clarification about Esdith. She was very aggressive in fighting and also went in love. In the morning, he met Akame's sister who turned out to be a member of the Jaegers. It looked like she wanted to kill her sister so badly. Then Esdith told Tatsumi to come to the mountain to hunt. There Tatsumi thought it was a chance for him to escape. While walking, Tatsumi and Wave were attacked by a group of tree monsters. Tatsumi used it to escape using Incursio quickly. It turned out that Wave was the same royal weapon user as him, but he still didn't know that it was Tatsumi. Instead of fighting, Tatsumi was more concerned with escaping. But unfortunately, he met a monster. Luckily Akame came just in time to the rescue. Then Lubbock quickly took them to the base. After arriving at the base, Tatsumi gave information on all the Jaegers. Akame was disappointed because Kurom became one of them. From Kurom's view, Akame had become a traitor. The abilities of the Jaegers were as strong as theirs. But Esdeath was very different. Tatsumi was still determining if they could win over her. But Akame said that she must have a weakness. She was a living being which means she had a heart. So that's why she's going to kill her. One of the Jaegers followed Tatsumi outside the base and eventually found their base. That person's name was Stylish. He mobilized all of his soldiers to attack Night Raid. 
but for Night Raid members, those artificial minions were nothing. There Tatsumi met someone who used a shield weapon. He had a hard time because the weapon could penetrate his armor. It wasn't long before mine came to help, and in one strike, she beat him. <laughs> When all members gathered, they suddenly fell, and only Tatsumi was not affected because he was wearing armor. It turned out that Stylish used paralysis poison to stop their movements. Only a short time after, Nagender returned with two new members. She ordered one person to come down to clean things up. He was a royal weapon named Suzanu. After reading the situation, Nagenda knew the location of Stylish, and then she ordered Suzanu to finish them all again. Because the situation was not in his favor, Stylish used the potion he made so that his body evolved to become large. Seeing this, Tatsumi and Akim tried to help Suzanu, and he defeated one of the Jaegers. <laughs> Then Nagenda took them all to a temporary hiding place. There he introduced their two new members, the first named Chelsea and another named Suzanu. He was the new Nagenda's weapon, which he got from the Revolutionary Army's headquarters. His nature was very caring and tidy, and his ability was also qualified. He was not only great at fighting but also at household chores. Chelsea's royal weapon could transform her into anything. After some time with Night Raid, Nagenda asked how she thought about joining them. She admitted that the Night Raid members were stronger than the previous team, but being strong was not enough for them to survive. She suggested they should drop their naivety. No matter how many lives they had, it wouldn't be enough if it was like that. She said that because she didn't want them to suffer the same fate as the previous team. The scene changed when it was reported that many monsters were attacking the capital. The Prime Minister asked Esdif to solve the problem. As a general who loved fighting, Esdef accepted it with pleasure. Of course, to Esdef, that atmosphere was nothing. Elsewhere Tatsumi continued to train with Suzanu. He taught him not to always use his full strength to destroy something. No matter how hard it was, there must be a weak point, and it will be very beneficial if you could find it when fighting. It was only a short time before Akame came to inform the emergency about monsters attacking the capital. Nagenda said the monsters attacked in swarms as if they had strong minds and physiques. Many fighters had lost against them. The Jaegers, as well as the royal police, exterminated them every day. But the number of monsters did not decrease at all. In other words, Night Raid would help the kingdom to fight them. There they would move at night when the kingdom rests. As night fell, Tatsumi was assigned to Lubbock. There Lubbock told him that he was the son of a rich man. Since childhood, he could get whatever he wanted until he got bored with the world. However, when Nagenda was assigned to the city where he lived, Lubbock immediately fell in love at first sight. That was why he enlisted in the army to work alongside her. He was also able to be in Night Raid because of his love for Nagenda. But what was the power of unrequited love? Having yet to find any monsters, Tatsumi intended to check the situation at the top of the hill, and unfortunately, instead of encountering monsters, he met Esdef. It didn't take long for Esdef to sense someone was hiding. It turned out that she was the mastermind of the monsters. Then she activated the royal weapon skill to teleport them to a different place. At times like that, Esdef even felt she was on a date with Tatsumi. Then a giant monster appeared in front of them. But Esdef's attack still couldn't beat him. Their Tatsumi attacked him directly. After that, they searched every place for clues. While relaxing, the exit suddenly reappeared. Tatsumi chose to leave first so he could escape. He put on his armor and disappeared to hide from Esdef. At Night Raid headquarters, Nagenda devised a plan capitalizing on popular rebellion. The revolutionary army would start an uprising in the south, moved straight to the capital, and destroyed the empire. Their mission was to go to the center of the path of peace and kill Bolak. He was a criminal who mixed drugs into his followers' food. The last one was facing the Jaegers. As long as Esdith was in charge, they were part of the Prime Minister's special army. For the plan to run smoothly, they would finish off the Jaegers first by trapping them out of town. Their main goal was to finish off Kirum and Balls. On the other hand, Esdith was also ready to fight. Nagenda received reports that Esdith and the Jaegers had made their move. 
He calculated their speed and was sure they would reach the next day. During the break, Esdith realized Night Raid would trap them in a different direction. Magenda headed east while Akame headed south. They would split the task into two parts to catch up to both. The scene changed when some Jaegers arrived at the specified location. Their mind tried to shoot Kirom off guard, but her reaction was so fast that she was able to dodge. Then Suzanu managed to throw Wave far away, leaving them as the primary goal. Kirom took out the soldiers from the corpses she collected. With her sword skills, she could turn corpses into puppets. The sword was named Yatsufusa. The fight was fierce because of the troublesome Kirom's doll made. Tatsumi couldn't attack dolls whose movements were very agile. On the other hand, mine was being chased by a puppet that used a firearm. Then Leon had a hard time against the doll wearing the whip. It wasn't long before Nagenda chose against her because she was her old partner. But suddenly, Kirom quickly slashed Leon's hand. She would attack even if there were the slightest opening. Leon was very annoyed by the attack, but Nagenda told her to help Akaim first. Elsewhere, Esdith was astonished not to find Nagenda and only the bandits blocking her, but she would still finish them all off. Back to the fight, Tatsumi was still struggling against the two dolls. It didn't take long for Chelsea to come disguised as someone they knew. Then she killed at the point of the monster's nerve, and elsewhere, Nagenda managed to beat the man. Then she helped Suzanu defeated a large monster doll. Akaim had a lot of trouble getting close to balls because the doll was always in her way. It wasn't long before Leon came to her aid. There she managed to break balls' guns, but balls chose to destroy them all. Akame survived, thanks to Leon holding off the explosion using a shield. On the other hand, Kuro managed to escape with her doll, and it turned out that Balls also managed to run even though the point of the explosion was right in front of him. Then he met a small, scared child. It turned out that the child was Chelsea. After that, Lubbock asked her to come home immediately, but Chelsea chose to chase and kill Kuro before she met Esdef. She was very confident in her abilities. To approach Kirom, she transformed herself into balls. There she also managed to find Kirom who was relaxing. When there was a gap Chelsea immediately launched the action. At first, she was pleased to be able to kill Kirom. But she woke up again with a different aura. In the end, Chelsea had to die on this mission. At night raid headquarters, Lubbock reported that Chelsea was chasing Kirom. They were distraught because Kirom wasn't an ordinary person. For that, Tatsumi and Akame would look for her. Tatsumi was shocked when he saw Chelsea's head stuck in a pole. Unfortunately, Night Raid didn't have time to be sad. They would temporarily serve in the Kyorok territory. After the mission there was completed, the Revolutionary Army could go into action. They would defeat the Empire and stop this tragedy. On the other hand, the Jaegers had arrived at the Boric residence. They were introduced to the Four Guardians, called the Four Giant Demons of the Rough-Handed Temple. They were very excited to finish off the Night Raid members. Then the Night Raid members were divided into several teams to conduct an investigation. Their Lubbock walked alone, mingled with the people. However, two of Boric's subordinates there began to get suspicious of his movements. At night Lubbock tried to escape from them both. He pretended to be dead to avoid the fight. But there was someone who was lost and caught up in the fight. Lubbock was forced to attack to save her. However, two on one, Lubbock had its way of winning the battle. Elsewhere, when Akame was talking to two soldiers, suddenly Boric's subordinates attacked her, but they were nothing to Akame. Then when Tatsumi and Mine disguised themselves, they were quickly spotted by Suryu and Suzuka. Because the situation had worsened, they chose to leave there. But not far from there, Suyu caught up with them and launched an attack. <laughs> Luckily they survived thanks to the Incursio. Then next, Suzuka came launching an attack. For that, Tatsumi would overcome Suzuka and Mine would fight Suryu to avenge Shiel. Tatsumi continued to fight until he reached an old building. And to beat him, he used the building. On the other hand, Mine now knew all of Suryu's skills from the previous battle. Even she could overcome all her attacks. Although she also took a few hits from Suryu, she rose to defeat her. Mine managed to beat her, but Suryu still had the last weapon, an explosive embedded in her head. Mine had only one minute of escape time. When the explosion occurred, Mine was desperate that she would die. But she was still lucky because Tatsumi still managed to save her. Moving on to Boric's palace, Lubbock and Akame finished him. 
and after this mission, they would focus on the kingdom. A few days later, Tatsumi and Lubbock launched an investigation. Leon and Mine investigated the capital's sewers. Then Tatsumi was met by a woman from the resistance. She then took them to the palace, where several other members were. But it turned out they had been killed and used as explosives. That person was the Prime Minister's son named Sura. It was only a short time before General Buto came to intercept them. He was a great general who was equal in strength to Esdef. Like it or not, Tatsumi had to face him, and Lubbock faced Sura. Lubbock had a lot of trouble fighting Sura because he had all the traps marked in the kingdom. Then the woman tried to frame Tatsumi. She did that out of deep fear of Sura. But apparently, Sura instead attacked the woman, and that annoyed Lubbock. He managed to corner him with threads he had placed everywhere. But again, the woman had made an unexpected attack. Then Sura transported him to the end of the world. But he still had a way to beat him. Even though he succeeded in defeating Sura, in this mission, Lubbock had to die. Down there, Tatsumi lost against Budo and was held in prison. Then the Prime Minister gave the punishment by being executed in public, and Esdeth should do it herself. To overcome this, the remaining members must thwart it and save Tatsumi. When the execution was about to begin, Esdeth was about to execute Tatsumi, and it wasn't long before the Night Raid members came to attack them. The General and Suzanu immediately confronted Esdeth. Mine and Leon must confront Budo. Meanwhile, Akame attacked inside the kingdom to get in Curcio's sword. Mine took several fatal hits but managed to put all of her last attacks into defeating Budo. Nagenda and Suzanu also put their all into it. But here, Esdeth had a space and time freezing technique so she could destroy Suzanu. But Nagenda still had the energy to restore it, which she then used to get out of there. On the way to the headquarters, Mine asked Tatsumi to stop. It turned out that Mine had to die here. After that, Tatsumi asked why he was saved so that the mission made Mine die. Nagenda explained that if he died, the death penalty would break the spirit of the revolutionary army. Those who were left must bear the burden of their dead friends. The next day the revolutionary army continued to attack the kingdom from various directions. Esdeth was very happy because she would be fighting a vast army. Inside the kingdom, Emperor was very confused about what to do. Then the Prime Minister used him again by ordering him to act even more violently. On the other hand, Akame received an invitation from Kurum for their final fight. The battle between the sisters was so fierce that it raised a huge monster. The monster easily defeated two Kurum dolls. To beat him, they both had to work together. After defeating the monster, they returned to fight each other. It was only a short time before Wave came to help Kurum. Soon Tatsumi also came to stop him. He just wanted to ensure their fight didn't get in the way. He believed Akame and Kurom had their reasons to stop their past problems. In that fight, Akame finally was able to defeat her. The next day Nagenda led the revolutionary army to take control of the entire kingdom. However, the prime minister continued influencing the emperor to activate a powerful royal weapon. His attacks had enormous destructive power. Tatsumi tried to stop him with all his might. He wanted to tell him the result of what the emperor did. But the Prime Minister continued to influence the Emperor. It wasn't long before Wave came to save Tatsumi. Tatsumi recalled Suzanu's words about things having a brittle point. Then Incursio evolved again for the final attack. Unfortunately, the giant's body fell toward the residence there. Tatsumi, with his last strength, tried to stop it. But as a result, Tatsumi had to die. Esdef, who saw it, was very upset. Now Akame had to face her, who was the last obstacle. To beat her, Akame used the power of Murasama's curse. Instantly her speed and attacks increased until she was able to injure her. But when the curse had set in, Esdeth chose to cut off her arm so she could survive. When Akame's sword was about to hit her, Esdeth used space and time skills to stop her. But it turned out that it was just Esdeth's imagination. After the skill ended, Akame immediately slashed her. Finally, she was able to beat Esdeth. Before dying, Esdeth chose to be destroyed along with Tatsumi. On the other hand, Leon managed to catch up with the Prime Minister, but he had a royal weapon that could destroy other weapons. He continued his attack by firing his gun, but Leon still stood her ground and beat him to death. After that, she pretended to be okay in front of Akame. Then she went to where she used to have fun with her friends, and in a dark alley, she breathed her last. The next day the Emperor was executed for the payment he had made so far. On the other hand, the people of the village receive rewards for Tatsumi's hard work. Then Nagender replaced the Emperor to build a new land, and Akame would go to reveal all the good sides of the revolutionary army. And that's the whole storyline of Akame got killed. Thank you for watching this video until the end. Sorry if there are errors in this content. Please provide criticism and suggestions. Like this video if you like it and don't forget to subscribe. See you in the following video.